Hello, thank you for joining me today for our Thursday morning Tao Te Ching study at uh, in Hu Healing Group on Facebook. Uh, last week we finished uh, Tao Te Ching chapter 5. So today we're going to continue on to Tao Te Ching chapter 6. Today is our first part 1 of uh, uh, studying Tao Te Ching chapter 6. Hi Kim, hi Kevin, hi Dr. Joe. Nice to see you. So today we will be studying Tao Te Ching chapter six. Before we start, I want to mention that um, uh, last week and this week's Tao Te Ching, the Chinese version, I started to use a uh, um, version that because um, there are several uh, famous versions of Tao Te Ching and they are uh, some have more minor differences um, some might be having more differences and so since we started we've been doing um, a version that's more common and since yesterday I started using this version that um, was is called Bo Shu Lao Zi Bo means silk so this version of you know Lao Zi, Lao Zi is the author of Tao Te Ching. So Tao Te Ching is also called Lao Zi. Uh, this version was discovered. Actually, the story is um, in 1973. Uh, the uh, people in China in Changsha found this tome that's over 2,000 years old. It's uh, during the Xi Han Dynasty. So it's about 2200 years old tome and it's a tome at that time by a uh, of a high official and his family so it's a has a lot of stuff and it certainly is a rich rich family so they found a lot of very precious uh, um, artifacts in the tome and there are a lot of books that um, was written on on silk on silk instead of paper instead of paper so people call uh, this version of uh, Lao Zi, also Tao Te Ching, called Bo Shu Lao Zi, means written on silk. And um, you probably know I went back to China this past summer and I talked to some friends who also have been studying Tao Te Ching and really has been um, having a lot of uh, insight. Let's say I, I've talked to them, I've learned a lot and they recommend this version so i start looking into it and i really like this version so just to have you tell you um the version of Dao Te Ching we're studying with and so if you've seen other versions it might be different then you know why there, there are several um, versions of uh, the Dao Te Ching so today chapter six i'm going to read the chinese version of the chapter six first and then we'll start dig into it Chapter 6 Yu Shen Yu Shen Bu Si Shi Wei Xuan Pin Xuan Pin Zhi Men Shi Wei Tian Di Zhi Gen Mian Mian Ke Ruo Cun Yong Zhi Bu Jin This is a chapter that I really like too. It's also another uh, relatively short chapter, even though uh, pretty much None of the Dao Te Ching's 81 chapters are very long. Um, however, that um, today when I was preparing for today's class, you see, I pretty much only got to about the first four, four words. So the first half of the sentence. And I felt like there was enough for, for today, to, for us to cover for today. So it's it's short, but it's very condensed and um, wisdom in this. The first word in chapter six is Yu. Yu in Chinese often uh, people talk about a Xi Yu. So you see these words of these two words are often said together. Xi Yu means we uh, you take a shower, take a bath, basically just wash up, clean up. 
And what, so what are we cleaning up here that Lao Zi is, is uh, talking about? Let's see, the second word is Shen. So we're cleaning up Shen. And Shen, as I'm thinking about it, it's a, it's a very interesting word in a way that um, it really tells a lot about how people, at least the Lao Zi seeing how he's seeing as humans and um, as say gods or or divine ability, divine figures. Why? Because Shen actually has a, let's say two two meanings, two groups of meanings. One meaning Shen in Chinese is referred to, like I said, like divine beings or gods. Uh, let's say uh, like the god in Christianity. In China, in China, often can be referred to as Shen. Also, all uh, like you know, in um, in Indian religion, there's a lot of gods, and in Chinese, uh, like low, um, our uh, grassroots religion, you can say as a lot of uh, we also have a lot of gods, and these gods are all can consider Shen, or we also use what Shenling to refer to them. And these Shen, they are like they have forever life, live forever. Uh, they have like Shen Yurali, for example, some people probably know about like the Jade Emperor, who is the, the leader of all gods, and they live up in the heaven and they um, not only live forever, there is a saying that um, one day in heaven equals a whole year on earth. And so for humans, life is only probably, even we live up to 120 years, is only, let's say, four months, four months in heaven. There are stories about um, uh, a, a normal human has gone, usually is into, uh, like, climb a mountain and end up going to this, uh, also, um, let's say, this God's, uh, Shen's place, and it was only s s slept or stayed for a few days, and when he, he came home, he found out that it's like how many decades has passed. So there are stories like this. Also, these Shen has, uh, really they have like supernatural uh, powers. They either can control, um, control weather or um, control people's uh, destiny. Anyway, they're, they're just like a more than human, that the higher um, level, spiritual level, you can say, existence. However, this word Shen is often used talking when it's talking to about um, humans. For example, um, you often hear people say Xin Shen. Xin means heart. Xin Shen. And this, the Xin in he, here, it doesn't mean our physical heart. It's when in Chinese people talk about xin shen, it's often talk about um, something that um, can be can be talking about the feelings or our um, spirit and even even our thoughts. So it's it's the it's the you can say it's the non physical body part of our our of us and. Also, sometimes people say, for example, if you are talking, someone is talking to you and, and your mind sometimes suddenly, let's say, wanders off to uh, somewhere. And in Chinese, it's called zo shen. That means, like, zo means wander. So it means your shen wandered away. So he here, the shen can be said, like your, your mind. Um, also, another common where you hear about people talk about Shen is in Jing Qi Shen. Jing Qi Shen is often talked about in um, either martial art, traditional Chinese medicine. It's Qi, you know, a lot of people know is the, the Qi, the energy. So Jing Qi Shen are also considered um, part, of a, part of us that's um, you can say it's the higher energy level of our being. 
the interesting about it, you, you can see, so basically we or Chinese pe people believe that um, the Shen, as a Shen, is not, um, uh, doesn't have to be something that's uh, other, that's something often super uh, power, high natural over uh, humans. And it's often because everybody, everybody has this part of us who's also Shin. And so that means if we're able to somehow connect more or stay more in that energy level, is that means in a way you become a, a God. So you basically is aware or um, be able to connect with your God nature. And how are we doing it? And that's why I think we're studying Dao Zhe Jing. And let's see how um, Lao Zi is talking about as we learn it. Okay, so we just explained the first two words, Yu Shen. So it means we wash up, we clean up our um, Shen. Let's see here as uh, the most accurate, let's say will be probably our um, our mind, our spirit, just use that. If there isn't an exact translation between Chinese and English, so let's let's just use, but you will know, you, I mean, as we, since we were, as we discussed earlier, you know, Shen is the part of us that's like a higher energy level or the formless part of the more expanded part of us. And Yu Shen Bu Si, that's the first half of the first sentence, is Yu Shen Bu Si. Bu means no, and Si means die. So here, literally is saying, if you clean up, if you, if you wash up, if you keep your Shen, your mind, spirit clean, then what will, you, what will, be, what will happen? Then you will not die. What would have not died? What would have not, just like I said, has forever life is God, right? And what I really like this part because it really reminds me, of, for example, like, you know, washing up. We, we wash up, we do, we shower um, every day, every other day. We, I mean, people, that's, that's just one like routine thing we do every day. And we take shower. And everybody knows that, you know, we shower. Why, why do we shower? It's because, you know, over, over the days we do things and we get our, our body gets dirty and then we take a shower and then we clean up our body. Then our body stays clean and stays healthy. However, how, how often, let's see, how often do we clean our mind and our spirit? And we would be in a, since since we were born, we've been learning things. We've been picking up things. We've been picking up um, society, st the standards in society, and what's the right thing to do, what's the wrong thing to do, and we started to these things start to stick with us, and we started to use these to to judge. And um, these are how, like, okay, somebody did this wrong because of they, they didn't do it this way or they did it the, the other way. And um, we just don't, we don't realize. We just kind of get so used to it. And, and then make me think about what are, what are all the uh, standards that I have that I'm not aware of. I'm using it to judge others. I mean, I have to confess um, for example, like if I, if I drive on the road and let's say if a, the standard is a 35 miles an hour, okay, so probably most people drive 35 to 40, let's say. And if you're driving on the road and if you run into someone in front of you who's driving, you know, 25, 30, and you, 
I mean, I, I have to say, I, some, I, I get annoyed. Not like I'm going to do anything, but in my mind, it's like, why is this person so slow? And then I realize, you don't realize this, like, for, this is an example, just like there is a, seem to be a standard of doing things. And then you use the standard to start to judging. And whether judge yourself, whether judge others, if somebody is not doing things in that standard, and you start to see like, oh, this person is not doing the right thing. Simple as even like driving on the, on the street. And these are um, not saying they're not useful standards for us. We, kids need to learn, we need to learn these, we need to be able to better work with other people. There's usefulness for setting up a stand, some standard in the society. However, if we if the, that becomes something that um, the the use of it the standard of the, the use of it is so um, for example the traffic so the, the speed limit is so people don't drive too fast and cause danger however let's say for for me if i see this set that as standards as oh that's what everybody should be driving at and if somebody's driving slow then and that means you know why why are we just driving so slow and taking so long when i start to use use that standard and to start to judge people and that is similar to like in my mind that's that's almost like the dust that's accumulated on it and i'm seeing things i'm i'm seeing um the reality out of out of these, out of the um, the dust, and it, it's just because I don't um, take time. I don't um, to yushen to wash to make sure my mind and my spirit are cleaned up, and we we do that every day. We wash up our body, and shouldn't we be also trying to do at least some time a day? Let's say if we use. If we do 10 minutes to shower every morning, should we also at least give 10 minutes to our, to our mind and to our spirit to make sure we wash it up? Because we all know what happened if we don't shower, dirt accumulates on our body, what's happened, what's gonna happen. And we're just not aware of what if all the dirt are accumulating in our mind and our spirit, what's gonna happen. And here, Lao Tzu is actually pointed out pretty clearly. He says, if you Shen, if you keep your mind body clean, then you do not die. And maybe, you know, if, if we, we are not be able to, certainly we're used to um, not paying as much attention to make sure we, um, clean up our mind and our spirit. However, the more we can do it, I would say then, even though we may not be able to never die, but it will help us to, to uh, have a, a long and healthy and fulfilling life. It's the importance of, um, here, Lao Tzu said this, Yu Shen Bu Si, also remind me of a very famous um, um, Chan Buddhism story, and I would like to share with you here. And you, once I finish the story, you you realize the similar similar of, of the wisdom here. So I will talk about before uh, Chan Buddhism is the uh, Chinese uh, Buddhism, and later on it spread to Japan. And then it's called in Japan. It's called Zen. So the Chan is Zen. Um, it's just Zen is in Japanese. Chan is in Chinese. And Chan Buddhism um, started by uh, the found the. You can say the, the founder, the first patriarch, is um, a monk called uh, um, Buddhi Dharma. Buddhi Dharma. He lived around the uh, 5th or 6th century. And he's the, uh, the 26th gen generation um, after Buddha of the, the lineage. That he's the 26th generation of the Buddha's uh, disciple, you could say, or students. 
and he's also the um, let's say the the head uh, let's say the head monk for um, in the for the Buddhism branch in his country and he came to China his idea is to bring uh, Buddhism to China so he's um, um, after so he ended up uh, having one student so he's considered in Chinese he's considered um, Yi Zu Yi means a first Zu Zu is a respective um, a name that calling someone who is the founder who is at least the important the head figure of um, let's say a group or a religion and then he passed on to a student and this Arzu means the second generation uh, patriarch and it started to pass down to uh, Wuzu the fifth generation and this story, this famous story, is a story about um, the sixth generation, how the sixth generation patriarch in Chan Buddhism um, got to become the sixth generation. And the sixth generation patriarch, his name is uh, Hui Neng. He and the uh, Bodhidharma, the first generation uh, monk, these two are probably the most famous figures in Chan Buddhism. And the story is a story pretty much every Chinese people who, if you, they've heard about the, uh, the any Buddhism stories, they would have heard about this one. So this is a very famous one. And also it's famous, I'm thinking, it's because there are things, there are wisdom in this, in here we learn, everybody can relate it to. So this, okay, so that's a little, uh, background information. So now let's dig into the story. So Hui Neng, who uh, before he became the sixth generation patriarch, the head of the Chan lineage, he was um, a poor a poor person. His father passed away pretty early and he was living with his mom. He was doing hard la labor, hard work labor. And then one day he heard someone uh, citing the Diamond Sutra and um, he he only heard a very short piece of it and he really I think the wisdom connect with him he realized that there's something in uh, the, the the writing or in Diamond Sutra that's what he's he's seeking so he asked the person who is citing the Diamond Sutra saying oh where did you hear about this and this person told him saying, oh, um, Wu Zu, the fifth generation monk, whose name is Hong Ren. He says, oh, Hong Ren is teaching uh, Diamond Sutra at this temple. So Hui Neng decided, it's pretty far away, but Hui Neng decided this is, that's what he wants. He wants to learn more. He wants to um, seek out Hong Ren. So he traveled to this temple and then at first, because he's, he's new, he, he has a, he's doing um, like kitchen work in the temple. At the same time, Hui Neng, uh, Hong Ren also has, um, uh, Hong Ren's, at that time, Hong Ren's most famous student is a big monk called Shen Xiu. And Shen Xiu is the, uh, considered by the other students as the most achieved, who uh, has the most spiritual uh, development. And he actually even, he also teaches already to the level that uh, Hong Ren think that he can teach some of the younger monks. They seek, at least the seekers. So when it's time where that Hong Ren think that he should be passing down to and means selecting uh, one of his students as the sixth generation patriarch, so as the head of the of the temp the the lineage. What he did is he called all his students up. He says, um, "If everybody, if you're interested in wanting to um, 
basically be selected as uh, the sixth generation patriarch. Why don't you, each person, uh, bring me a jizi. Jizi, this word, it's, um, it's often common in Chan Buddhism. It's like a poem you write, however, it's not any poem. It's usually a poem that either shows uh, the level of your sp spiritual development or is passing down some wisdom. It's like the Chan, excuse me, Zen style wisdom for, the, for two others. He says, okay, all the students, if you want, you can um, write a jizi, a poem, and then just to show me, show me where you are, and then I will pick who, who is qualified, who is the right one for me to pass down this lineage to. And all the other students saying, okay, um, let's like, even though uh, the teachers, this is what the teacher is saying, but we all know uh, our um, big brother, Shen Xiu, he is the, let's say, the, he's the most highly regarded, he's, he's, he's the best of the students. So let's just not write it so Shen Xiu can write it and then he can become the, the next generation patriarch. So Shen Xiu wrote this jizi. It's um, Shen Shi Pu Ti Shu. Xin Ru Ming Jing Tai, Shi Shi Qin Fu Shi, Wu Shi Ran Chen Ai. So that's the poem in Chinese. Let me, I'll translate it. It means our body is like a Bodhi tree. Our heart, it's not a physical heart, our heart, our mind, it's like a mirror. Shi Shi Qin Fu Shi means we, we should clean it. We should um, make sure, 时时 means constantly, very often, all the time, to try to clean it. You see why, now you see why I'm thinking about the story when I see the yu shen bu si, it's washing up, make sure our clean, our body and our mind are clean. Wu shi ran chen ai, it means make sure it doesn't have any dust. And when um, Hong Ren, so the teacher, when Hong Ren teacher saw Shen Xiu's jizi, and he said, this is a very good one. And he asked uh, the, the work, the people who work in the temple to make, to basically um, write it down and then uh, write it even on the wall and saying, you guys should all make sure you um, spread this out. This is good for people who who are into Chan Buddhism and who want to improve, um, who wants to, let's say, who wants to learn the truth, who wants to connect with their, their deeper, deeper nature. Um, the, this is a good, this is a good way for them to do. And then you, you know, since Hui Neng, the, the, who ended up to be the sixth generation patriarch, uh, we haven't talked about his jizi, his poem yet. So you know that's the, not the end of the story. So after Hui Neng saw Shen Xiu's jizi, the one we were just talking about, he realized that, okay, um, it's, a, it's a very good. However, it has not been really been touching the the deeper truth of it, of the nature of us. So he, what he did is he, at night when everybody went to sleep and he got up and he ended up um, um, wrote another jizi. What he, his jizi is um, Pu Ti Ben Fei Shu, Ming Jing Yi Fei Tai, Translated that into English, it's um since it's you remember it's been responding to Shen Xiu's jizi. It says, um, Bodhi tree is not actually a tree. And a mirror is also not actually a mirror. 
本来无一物 means their true nature is not let's I true nature is not is nothing. Literally translated into nothing, we can we can think it as um, uh, these are if you see tree as a tree, you see mirror as a mirror. These are all on the surface. When you look into deeper, as what their their true nature is, their true nature is not physical. And 何处染尘埃 the last sentence it means. Since they don't really actually has a physical nature anyway, how can they get dirty? What I really like, especially,、um, oftentimes in Chinese story, because of this ji zi, because of this hui hui neng's ji zi, wu zu hong ren, hui neng's teacher,、uh, realized that he's the one. He's the one who's.、Uh, um, Be able to pass down this lineage, so Hui Neng ended up becoming the sixth generation patriarch. So often, the in China, if you hear this story, the story goes saying like, "Oh, so everybody, you should you should、um, not not really discard, but you should kind of、uh, think Shen Xiu, the first Ji Zi we talk, the first poem we talk about as not good enough because." Hui Neng's Ji Zi. So the second poem we were talking about is definitely a better one. That's why he, because of this Ji Zi, he became the,、uh, the patriarch, and the the teacher chose him. However, for me, based on my experience, I f- I I see it a little differently. I feel that these two poem really are make it perfect. Any one, it's just not,、um, not whole, because this is kind of like yin and yang, and what what Shen Xiu is telling us is actual practice. What do we do, and you know, people who are、um, who are interested in spirituality, who are on the path of seeking, or people who、um, just trying to.、Um, Have a clear, have a better、uh, house. And when you practice whatever exercise or practice you do, you need to do it constantly. It's rarely something that you do it once. Okay, suddenly you are、um, you're done. You're done for the rest of your life. I mean, think about it. We 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 eat we eat food. We don't just say okay. Or we, I ate breakfast this morning, so I'm done for the rest of my life. I don't need to eat breakfast anymore, right? And often the, we're trying to looking for a quick fix, quick way to solve our problem, which often either there may be quick fix, but then you may be suffering some certain side effect, or it's just not. There's just no quick fix there. And what usually happens is you practice whether it's Tai Chi, Qi Gong, any kind of practice, meditation. You do this. You do this. You need to 时时 means all the time. You do it every day, and then slowly had this cumulative effect. Then th- that's the, that's the thing you build it up. That's the then you have the strong base. So that's what. Shen Xiu's ji zi is good for, and why Hui Neng's ji zi becoming, I feel like complements and complete this whole, the story is that, then, Hui Neng's ji zi is telling us that, our like the other side, our our true nature, our true nature, is can can never be dirty, it's always. It's already always clean, and think about then. That means what we need to do. So we we need to constantly practice. Practice what? It's like we we've talked about this before. It's like the you and wu. Remember the white paper with the black dot on it, and then Dr. Jing Chapter One. He's talk Dr. Jing Chapter One talk about、uh, you the beingness. And the wu, the nothingness, how they are、um, one of the same thing. They're the two sides. 
for us, it's the same. When we realize our true nature, let's say, is the Wu, and it's always clean. It's no matter what the you, what the beingness is, you can be, uh, the beingness can be a beautiful garden. It's not affecting, is it gonna affecting the Wu, the nothingness of you? Or this beingness could be a, a trash barrel or something that's like been put it or put it like out in some garbage for for months and just like the or the whatever the gross gross image you can think about do you think that would all that can do anything affecting the wolf the nothingness of you so basically once you understand hui neng's uh poem you realize our true nature is always this um consciousness this space that everything's happening so what we that's why these two d's you understand them you realize that okay so you know your true nature is always clean and whenever your let's say your attention your focus is more on the the physical part or what's happening in your consciousness and you just whenever all you need to do is in a way step back one step realize what you truly are and then you realize nothing that's happening in your consciousness can actually affect you and this constantly stepping back is what shen xiu talking about this constantly cleaning so how we clean we're cleaning our mind and spirit it's not like okay i make sure i'm always staying in the in the beautiful garden i'm always surrounded by pretty flowers because we know in reality we we that's not always going to happen everybody would have sometimes you experience things you like other times you experience things that you don't like however as long as you realize that whenever you are whatever situation you are you can all you need to do is to one step back realize your true nature knows that nothing happening whatever's happening to you cannot actually truly affect you and that is what we do constantly yushen, washing our mind and spirit bu si. Okay, I, I forgot to bring a clock with me, so I think it's probably past time. And, and today we talk about the first four words in uh, chapter six, Yu Shen Bu Si. So next week, we will continue uh, Dao De Jing chapter six. Thank you for joining me. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.